Hi gang, it's me Wahoo. Welcome back to Wahoo's Corner. If you're new here, hey queen. If you're not new here, sit down, bestie. Um, sit. Settle in today. We're gonna be doing um my thoughts on a book books two books i've read recently and these are like might just be my favorite books of this year but it's only halfway through the year so let's not let's not be so too hasty what do you know what i mean um so recently i've read two books i read circe by madeline miller and i read the god of small things by arundhati roy i hope i'm saying that right and i just want to sit here and talk to you about these two books because i think i think yeah so get a drink this might be a little long one so get a drink coffee whatever put me on in the background do your homework do the sketch you should have been doing yeah whatever okay and let's just get started i want to talk about the god of small things first this one i read um a few weeks ago i think um I, I finished this one first okay so let me just tell you what this book is about this book is about back for you it's the in Rahel. i don't know <laughs> Esther and Rahel, seven-year-old twins, are growing up amidst vats of banana jam, mountains of peppercorn, and scenes of political turbulence in Kerala. When their beautiful young cousin Sophie arrives, their world is shaken irre irre irrevocably. An illicit liaison and tragedies, accidental and intentional, expose things that lurk unset in a country drifting dangerously toward unrest. Okay, and I'm I'm trying to think of how to phrase this book review without giving away any spoilers and if you can hear the people yelling it's my neighbors we are moving soon okay we are moving soon and this will be different okay so let me start off by saying how much um arundhati roy ho like harps on the little things like i even remember vividly in the first scene uh, one of the twins, he's older, he's walking across the street, and he, t I don't know if Arundhati Roy is a man or woman, I'll just use um, they, them, singular pronouns, but um, they talk about, they say something about an otter, no, it wasn't an otter, it was like a gopher or something, um, it's something so small and insignificant, it's like, why would you mention that, like, you know, usually authors don't really care about like what the branches on the tree look like in the scene they don't care about how the bus driver's hands smell they don't care about like these are all things that that arundhati roy like has um mentioned i'm so bad at this i didn't know i could be bad at something i'm just so bad at this i don't know how to put my feelings into words People are so eloquent. People who are eloquent. How do you do that? How do you do this? Um, maybe I should have written it down. But I like to I like to speak from the heart. So, um, basically, the main takeaway I had about this book was it all felt like an inside joke. Roy would, um, I don't know, like, just in a blase manner they would talk about like how the bus driver's hand smelled sour like like iron because they were holding onto the bus rails and you could smell it when they asked for the ticket and roy would bring that up again and again like they would say something like oh um mama chi's hands were like sour like and i would and you would be like yeah I like the bus driver's hands from earlier and roy would be like yeah I like the bus driver's hands from earlier and it just felt so inclusive like i've never felt so a part of a story before and i'm a kind of person who likes to read um you know self inserts fanfic you know i'm a type of person that f likes to um enjoy that kind of media but like in a mainstream um piece of art i guess piece of literature in mainstream literature you don't really get to feel like you are a part of the story like you are a vessel for the story 
and this and in this book you you do feel that way you do get that privilege of feeling like you are some way are in some way influencing how the story goes and how the story is is perceived and how it's digested i guess because you can latch on to um you can latch on to the description of the jam like you know like they talk about um esta the 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 boy twin these are these are dizygotic twins they were two separate two eggs two separate eggs that were fertilized at the same time so that's what a dizygotic twin is a monozygotic twin is twins are when one egg splits into two but these were two separate eggs you know what i mean you i don't need to why am i trying to give you like a lesson in biology you don't need this (laughs) but anyways yeah they talk about um esta like stirring the jam and they're describing like the the froth and the heat that's coming off of it and it's like i'm there like i'm the one mixing this jam and they bring it back they reference themselves yeah roy references themselves so much to the point where it feels like you you know like like i'm writing this this is my book like this is i'm i'm in on a joke that's what it feels like this whole book feels like you're in on it you know and it it it, it also makes you consider how big you are and how small you are at the same time it was like in comparison to a spider that uses an onion skin as a shell you are big but in comparison to the moon and the stars and just the entire galaxy you are inconsequential you are minuscule and there's importance in being both of those things at the same time you know like it's just very i was just like whoa i exist and i have an effect on the world around me i do not exist in a vacuum my feelings affect change they affect others around me they affect my environment if i so please they can if i so please like if i'm depressed my room's gonna be a mess that's me directly affecting my environment you know like directly having an impact on what my environment looks like based on my emotion alone and it's just like and we really do be existing <laughs> like that's what that book made me feel like i'm trying to give this do this review w- by without giving any spoilers at all because like I'm, I'm i'm bad at that and i'm trying to be better at that i'm just trying to give you i'm trying to encapsulate the theme and the story in and of itself by using abstract thought you know like i, I hope i hope i'm i hope i'm making sense to you but um yeah wait let me i think i want to give you like a direct quote oh there's also um this one detail that i liked i liked it so much that i marked it every time it came up rahel the girl twin she has this toy watch this is like when she was nine ten she was very young but it's like it's not like a real watch it's painted and it's painted on the time 10 minutes to two ten to two ten minutes to two and rahel checks the clock like um what is it not not occasionally she i guess she continuously checks the clock like throughout her childhood um but it's not really her childhood because like we jump from age 10 to age like 45 you know so it's not like a span it's just like this period in her life she was constantly checking the watch to like see how much time had passed and you know every single time it's gonna be 10 to 2 but she feels it noteworthy enough to be like oh it's 10 to 2 oh it's 10 to 2 and i think there was something she said okay rahel's toy wristwatch had the time painted on it 10 to 2 one of her ambitions was to own a watch on which she could change the time whenever she wanted to which according to her was what time was meant for in the first place and i was just like that is such a child thing to think right to to just to think that changing the time on your watch changes time in and of itself like because i changed my my 
time on my phone to 10 to 2 that just now means it's 10 to 2 like that's not what that means and it's and it's like when do we lose that that thing that makes us think that we are so um we are so important to the world around us that we think that our one of our actions can just change the world around like what am i trying to say um when do we lose that and why do we lose that ability to think that we have the ability to directly change the world like individually just ourselves like we have that power and i might just be reading into this but i don't think i am okay so leave me alone i don't think i am reading into this i think that's what roy meant okay sorry sorry i know there was like a oh. but i think that's what roy meant by including that and you can see rahel's rahel that's definitely not high like how rahel rahel right like rahel that's how i want to say it rahel i knew that i knew somebody named rahel in um high school she was a she was a german exchange student rahel i had a little crush on her you know she's as a baby gay i had a crush on her that's fine but yeah as you can see especially like in her later years you can see her wanting to be able to affect to change like that like you can see her lose that and it's so sad to watch because she realizes how small she is and how little control she has over her own life and the lives of those she loves, especially her brother. And oh, oh, yes. <laughs> um, I don't know if it, there is some incest. It's alluded to once near the end. And I also want to give a trigger warning for um sexual abuse, like molestation. Yeah, about halfway through the book. Yeah, trigger warning for that as well. But um i really enjoyed this book like it really i i really had a fun time because <laughs> yes and because you i don't know you just i just learned to appreciate the small things and how the small things make the man you know what i mean like the fact that you wear brown boots instead of black boots has an effect on who you are like like it, it, it betrays who you are the fact that you you chose the a, b instead of a and you know like it's really the small things that make a man and it's not these huge heroic actions it's those little everyday things that you know add up to who you are sum up your character and it's just like much to think about i just i had i had i laid there for a day or two i was like oh shit <laughs> but yeah definitely definitely i think worth a reread definitely for me i definitely marked it up let's see if i can give you guys another quote but i don't know if it's gonna make sense because it's just like like i said it's just like a reference to something earlier let's see i stopped underlining a bit into the book because i was like i don't have time i need to keep reading I need to find out, figure out what happened. Okay. The only faint suggestion that he had perhaps some design for life, just the whisper of an unwillingness to subsist on scraps offered by others. This was about Esther, who stopped talking when he got older. And I was just like, I, I low-key felt that because I like days where I don't talk. Why is that? I think I have to ask my therapist. This is not something I should be asking y'all. This is something I should be asking my therapist. Moving on. <laughs> Um, moving on to Cersei, which was much more grand, much more, um, divine, I want to say. Sorry. I want to say. Okay, so Cersei is about Cersei, who is a nymph, daughter of Helios, who is the god of sunlight. He is the god of, of, he's the god of the day, day right like because he's he's the one who brings the sun up every day you know he him and his chariot bringing up the sun and it's the story about how she gets exiled to an island called Aea and she learns about herself she learns that she's a witch 
and she learns about who her family really is you know the gods she learns about their arrogance and their inability to to consider others as more than themselves the the inability to see others as worthy of time if they if they aren't divine or if they're not a hero then they're nothing they're you know they're the ant beneath the boot and she learns that she doesn't want to be like that basically and she learns how to take care of herself she's no longer like she's no longer willing to subscribe to the stereotype of being a damsel in distress which is basically like that's what nymph is synonymous with is like damsel in distress because they're always getting sexually assaulted and like you know just kind of thrown in people just treat them like objects basically it's like pretty little things to have and when they get unruly you just exile them to an island basically but um cersei where her story begins i was like i was so mad i was like girl you better you better toughen up okay so the story starts with cersei being in love with this mortal his name is glaucus right <laughs> glaucus like who Glaucoma, more like bitch, get up. And he's a fisherman. He comes to, um, I don't remember where they lived, where Helios lived. Like it's not Olympus because those are the Olympians, Titan and Circe and basically Oceanus and um, Tart, whatever. Those are they are the Titans, and then the new gods, the Olympians. Um, the Olympians are the new shiny gods. That's Athena, uh, Zeus. Hermes, Hermes is more of a lesser god, but you know the big twelve like Hera, Poseidon, uh, the devil, the underground guy was his name. I should know his name, the one who's married to Persephone. <laughs> What's his name? Hades. God, that was way harder than it should have been. But yeah, they're they're basically the old religion. They're trying to coexist with the new religion, which the, the new religion is like snuff. I'm snuffing you out. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to kill you because you are a threat to my throne, my ascendancy, basically. And so yeah, where did that? Okay, Glaucus, right? Glaucus, Glaucus, Glaucus. Cersei falls in love with his mortal. His name is Glaucus. He's a fisherman and he comes to the island every day and he's like, he's like, my dad says I can't come here anymore because like I, I can't get any fish and we're starving and he beats me. And Cersei is like, yeah, I'll fill your net with fish, bro. Like, don't worry about it. And he's like, thanks, chief. Thanks, chief. Haha, -ha, chief. Imagine like, okay. You y'all get the point. But one day she goes to her grandmother and she's like, she's like, he's gonna die one day. And grandmother's like, yeah. Which you why you why you tell me this? Like, we know. Like, we just fuck up. And she's like, but I love him. And she's like, do not do anything. Like, this is how it's meant to be. He's meant to die. He's mortal. That's you know. That's how it's always been. That's how it will always be. And, but Cersei's like, I'm not having that, I'm not having that. And she finds this flower that changes things or people into who they really are. And she slips it into Glaucus's mouth while he's... And he turns into this giant sea god. And he's like blue and tentacles. And like, um, he earns the favor of her father, which is something that's basically impossible to do and cersei's like oh my god now we can be together forever uh. and i was like oh girl no oh girl no but um who could have guessed glaucus falls in love with his other nymph who is a total bitch by the way and cersei gets jealous and she puts this the flower juice into this girl's bath i think her name was sybil syphil syphilis who cares turn puts her in puts the water and the deuce into her bath water and miss sybil turns into like this giant seven head six head girl the details are escaping me turns into a, basically ursula with eight heads that are hungry which i guess that's what she truly was because i told y'all she was a bitch and um 
yeah everybody's like yeah that's just how it was that's just how it's meant to be but cersei goes to her father and she's like i did it i turned her into like a evil sea witch who eats people and her dad's like you gotta go you can't do this i'm ex she he went to zeus and zeus is like no she got to go she you need to get rid of her so he takes her to this island Aiea, where she learns witchcraft oh. you really get the this you know like the sense of immortality you know like some someone that you saw like 10 pages ago has been dead for 70 years in the next chapter and it's just like a blink in a blink of an eye and it's just like damn like that i guess that's that's like what it felt like to her you know just like blink of an eye he's old and gray and dead like he died a few years after his son died because like it broke his heart basically and she was like she was like but i saw him like yesterday it was like girl no that's what i liked about this book cersei like you really got how little t the passage of time mattered or like how basically like a year to us is like a long afternoon for her like it's just like oh today was long but like girl that's been a year you know like you really get the sense of how big she is in the sense in the time and like celeste not celestial wise like div divinity divinity wise i don't know but uh, obviously she's nothing compared to the olympians because she's just a nymph and they're like literal gods and th uh, towards the end we get athena athena is introduced and you could really feel like the divinity like smoking off of her and i was just like madeline miller is so good with like that imagery because she talked about athena's helmet and how like the horse hair was like grazing the the ceiling as she like walked and you could hear it and you could smell like this iron and like heat coming off of athena which is basically like her divinity like that's what her divinity smells like and like her spear was like you just i was i had a crush on athena let me be honest but she's honestly like mm. but let's get to the important important part or yeah important important part of the book is when she um basically she almost gets assaulted but then um she 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 gives them like a sleeping potion or whatever in their wine and they're like oh my god like who do we have to thank for this dinner like your dad and she's like no and like your husband she's like no and she's like your brother no but me and they're like oh so you're all alone huh funny captain tries to assault her and then she like she was gonna like put them to sleep but then she's like no nah! no she turns them into pigs because as she should as she should she had my full support in this i was like kill all men kill all men queen you are so right you are so so true bestie and she does this for i think 100 years or so some time passes where ships of men come and they see all her riches like all her nice stuff and it's a woman alone on an island it's basically free pickings and so she turns them into pigs turns them into pigs turns them into pigs and she's like she's like i kind of like this and i'm like bestie this is character development like especially looking from the start when she was like i hope he appreciates that i have a flower in my hair to like kill all men we love to see it you know we love to see that energy but there's always that one huh it's always that i hate, I hate all, men, all men but, but when he, when he loves me i feel like i'm living out odysseus if you've read the odyssey you know my boy odysseus 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 arrives to her island First, her me his men get there, and they're like, mm. and she turns them into pigs. And so he's like, he sits down, has a chat with her, because, you know, if you've read the Odyssey, you know Odysseus is crafty. He's one crafty motherfucker, okay? Like, so he's just like, oh, I like your, your loom. Like, you know, the thing, like, people make carpets with, I don't know, like, the loom, okay? A loom that Daedalus gave her. 
she's like oh yeah you know they list made it and she was like oh my god nobody's ever like noticed my loom like they're always talking about like the pearl ceilings or whatever (laughs) just like her ornate house and the tapestries and the jewels just laying around they they like to harp on that but like to to have someone acknowledge something that's so important to her kind of like took her off her guard which is exactly what Odysseus meant like Odysseus wanted to do he didn't get behind the spells he got behind the witch and so it was like (laughs) I hate all men but this one is entertaining to read about but yeah they basically have like a love affair he's like he's like my boat's broken like can I can me my can me and the crew like stay here for like just the spring just the winter until spring comes she's like yeah dude whatever Y'all go ahead, you, you can sleep in my bed if you want. There's only one bed. <laughs> but yeah, they have a love affair and then like the uh, spring comes and he's like, mm, I would stay n- another year. She was like, I, I would love if you stayed another year. He was like, great. So he stays and then like he tells her the stories about Troy and Achilles. Like Miss Miller references herself in the song, in this about the song of Achilles, like Odysseus tells us the story of Patroclus and, and, and Achilles and how <sighs> it definitely had an effect on me. But anyways, we get we get um, that story in a different perspective, Odysseus's perspective, of course. And then Odysseus is like, "Hey, yo, I have a wife and child on Ithaca. I should I should get back to that." She's like, "Ah, oh, okay, damn." But first, you got to go to this island talk to the death secrets or whatever i don't remember the details but after he leaves she finds out that she is with child and she basically yeah his she has a son named intelligonus which she was so badass like she gave herself a c-section because like homeboy was just not coming out and she was like scared he was gonna die and suffocate or drown or whatever babies do in the coochie when they take too long but yeah she cut him out by herself like she raised him by herself like she was like she was like this is my son this is my island or yeah but um you should really 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 definitely check it out because it is so like me think both of her books um i'm actually i'm actually like becoming a fan of madeline miller i wonder if like what other works she has because home when was this when did this come out because I don't know, some about some about her writing makes me feel like it's all true. Like it makes me feel like, oh, whatever she's saying, like it's true. Like I kind of forgot that this was like uh, fiction when it's come out. 2018, yeah, that's when I thought. That's what I thought. But yeah, I'm really, I'm definitely gonna keep an eye out for keep an eye out for Celine or. Um, <laughs> I'm so dumb. Why am I so dumb? But yeah, I'm gonna keep an eye out for Miss Girl, Miss Thing. See what else she got coming out because she is definitely one of those writers that's like, you got my heart. You have my heart. You definitely do. But uh, that's the end of this video. I think I've blabbed on long enough for ya. Um, and I like how these two books kind of juxtapose each other. This one talks about the small minuscule things in life and this one just talks about the grand scheme of things basically because it spans over such a long period of time you know what I mean but um these two books are definitely five stars from me like definitely 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 like they're definitely gonna be in my favorites of this year but um thank you so much for watching this video I have been Lahu it's been Lahu's Corner if you enjoyed this video please don't feel I was gonna say please don't feel free don't be afraid like the video okay please feel free to like it or subscribe if you want to see more of my beautiful mug. <laughs> but, uh, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. I have been long. I've already said that. And uh, if you like uh, this do later. I'm trying to practice my German. Shut up!